Now we're going to evaluate Margaret's lift capacity. We're going to use the EPIC lift capacity test. The EPIC lift capacity protocol can be used with several different types of apparatus. Here we have the West EPIC-1. The EPIC lift capacity test can be performed on the West EPIC-1. This is the ninth test in the Cal FCP battery. It takes about 30 minutes or so. And we're only going to go through the first three of the subtests in the EPIC lift capacity uh, battery. There are actually six subtests altogether. We'll just use the first three in order to evaluate Margaret's lift capacity. Margaret, now we're going to find out how much weight you can lift on a safe and dependable basis, just like you would at work. We're going to start off with having you lift this crate from this shelf to this shelf and back down again. After you've done that, I'm going to ask you to tell me how much it weighs by using this 10-point scale. Just select a number that corresponds to uh, your own feeling of how much that weighs, and I'm going to make a note of that, okay? I'm also going to record your heart rate by looking at my little monitor here. You're wearing a heart rate transmitter, and that's going to tell me how much work your, your heart is doing for you to be able to do that lift. I'm going to ask you then if you can do that lift on a safe and dependable basis 8 to 12 times a day, okay? Um, if you think you can, great. If you think you can't, that's okay too. If you can do that on a safe and dependable basis 8, 12, eight to 12 times a day uh, and everything else looks okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask you if you can handle more weight. And if you can, I'm going to add more weight to the crate, okay? Mm -hmm. and then we'll go through the lift again. If you don't feel like you can handle any more weight, that's okay. Just tell me so, and, and, and if that's appropriate, we'll stop. What I want you to do is uh, allow me to evaluate your ability to lift on a safe and dependable basis, just like you would at work, okay? Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Are you ready to go? Ready. Any questions at all? Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Go ahead and grab the uh, handles. You can grab either underhand like that or overhand. Pick it up from that shelf and move it on up to this shelf. Okay, and then take it back down again. Good. Would you rate that for me, please? Uh, one. Okay. And I'm going to get your heart rate here. Now, is that something, is that a, a weight you could lift on a safe and dependable basis 8 to 12 times a day? Yes. And can you handle more weight? Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and try that again. And back down again. That's fine. Okay. Would you rate that for me, please? Yeah. Okay. Is that something you can do on a safe and dependable basis 8 to 12 times a day? Yes. Can you handle more weight? Yes. All right. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, would you rate that for me, please? Two. Okay. And can you do that on a safe and dependable basis, 8 to 12 times per day? Yes. Can you handle more weight? Yes. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, would you rate that for me, please? Okay. Now, Margaret, is that something you can do on a safe and dependable basis 8 to 12 times a day? Yes. Can you handle more weight? Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Would you rate that for me, please? Six, okay. Could you do that on a safe and dependable basis eight to twelve times a day? Yes. Could you handle more weight? No. Okay, and why not? It's reached a point to where I had to push a little more to mm -hmm. get it up. What you were doing too is coming up on your toes a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it looks like your shoulders are reaching their maximum ability. Okay. Very good. All right, Margaret, are you ready? Yes. Let's go ahead and try this again from the floor up to this shelf. And then back down again. Okay, great. Stand up and tell me how much that weighs. Um, 
three. Okay, a three. Can you do that on a safe and dependable basis eight to 12 times a day? Yes. Can you handle more weight? Yes. Okay. As Margaret was going through the epic lift capacity test, I was looking at several factors. I was watching her feet as she moved back and forth with the load. I was evaluating what we call the high-risk work style that she was, be, she, she was demonstrating. We were looking at two factors, one, horizontal displacement, and two, stance. Those factors are closely related to uh, incidents of injury, and we want to take a close look at those also to make sure that the person is moving towards a maximum load. As people move toward their maximum load, they make changes in their foot position, their stance, and their distance from the, between the center of gravity of the load and the center of gravity of the spine at the sacrum. And we want to pay attention to that in order to confirm that the person is actually giving full effort and not either underdoing it or overdoing it and, and may be at risk of injury. I was also recording her heart rate uh, on a continuous basis as we went through the task. We have guidelines within which we require people perform. The person is not allowed to get above a certain uh, guideline to start each test nor during each test. We also have what are called biomechanical limits that are uh, tied to each person's height and that's also tied to each person's gender. So we have biomechanical limits that are different for men and for women. And finally, we're looking at the rating of perceived load chart. The stopping point for um, everybody that we test is uh, level 8 on the rating of perceived load chart. Most people stop before that at level 6 or 7, but some people will go up to level 8, and if they achieve level 8, then even if they believe they can go beyond that level, we require that they stop. One of the issues that we have to be concerned about when a person is going through a lift capacity test is whether or not the person has given us their best effort. One of the ways in which we keep an eye on that is by using what are called masked weights. Each of the weights is the same size and shape but has different colors, and the colors relate to different loads. The red weight weighs 10 pounds. The green weight weighs 2.5 pounds. The yellow weight weighs just 5 pounds and the blue weight weighs 15 pounds. As we go through the test, the weight is incremented on a 10-pound basis. The evaluee does not know that and does not know the starting weight either. If, as we get to the end of the test, we believe that the person may not have given us their full effort and we're concerned about that, we can do a retest after the person has rested using different color combinations. For instance, instead of using one red weight, we could use two yellow weights or one yellow weight and two green weights. The person's perception really needs to be tied to the load that he or she was lifting. The rating of perceived load, the person's own report on that 1 to 10 scale that we, re that we showed you a little while ago, the person's heart rate, and the adjustment of their high-risk work style factors should all correspond tied into the load, not the number of canisters that were in the uh, crate.